Hello everybody, Virtual Rook here to give you your VR news for this week. Today is September the 14th, so let's get right to it. Boz over at Meta has basically confirmed that they are in fact working on a small form factor AR headset that would have an external computing device that you would keep in your pocket that would then wire up to the headset. It is called Puffin, and it is slated to come out in 2027. We talked a little bit about this last week, so if you're curious about more information, I don't even know if there really is much more information than that, you can go and check out last week's news this side, I think. What I do think I missed last week was that it is going to be an AR-focused headset, probably not very much of a VR-focused headset. In other meta news, we also got more leaked images of the Quest 3S, which is almost definitely going to get announced at Meta Connect on September 25th of this month, which is just crazy that it's that close. But possibly even more interesting is that Boz has confirmed that at Meta Connect there's going to be some kind of groundbreaking AR announcement. Hopefully this isn't just another silly Ray-Ban announcement. I'm hoping we're going to get like actual AR news because I think that that'd be really cool. And finally for Quest news, Quest version 69, nice, should be out of beta now and rolling out to users. And it comes with so many new updates to your Quest 3 and Quest 2, I believe. You can now freely place your 2D windows anywhere you want. You can now multitask by bringing those 2D windows into your games. You can also now turn on content adaptive brightness, which will adjust the brightness of the screens in the headset depending on what you're looking at inside of the games. Though some people are saying that it doesn't adapt quick enough to feel natural, so they usually leave it off. I'll give it a try and let you know. It's something that I assume that they're going to probably keep working on in the future to make it a little bit more punchy and quick. Because the hope is that you're going to be able to get deeper, richer black colors whenever you're in a dark scene. And then finally, two small things. There will be Bluetooth quick pairing now, so if you have a headset like headphones or earbuds that you've connected to the Quest before, if you have them in and then turn on your Quest headset, they should automatically connect now, which I don't know why that wasn't a feature before, but now it is apparently. And finally, we get a new home environment called the Oceanarium in this update, which just sounds awesome. All right, moving right along to Apple's Vision Pro and the news for that. Vision OS 2 is going to be here on Monday, which is September the 16th. This is an update to their operating systems for the Vision Pro, and it comes with some interesting new features. For instance, they're stealing quite a few things for Meta, to be perfectly honest. You will now be able to connect your thumb and index finger together in a pinching fashion to open up your apps. You can also place your hand downwards in order to see the time, and pinching that will open up your control center. Another thing that they kind of took from Meta is that a lot of keyboards, specifically the Magic Keyboard for Apple, uh, will be tracked with the headset. So now you can be even more immersed in your virtual environment and you'll still be able to see your keyboard and use it. This is something that Meta also does with a variety of keyboards, but it's nice to see it in, you know, Apple Vision as well. They've also improved the hand tracking, so now whenever you move objects in your virtual world, they should track your hands much cleaner. This next one is a little bit less of a VR thing and more of just like cool stuff that Apple's doing. You can now turn any photo into a spatial photo, which is just kind of cool looking, just, you know, making anything 3D, which is Awesome. And then they also at least announced that eventually you're going to be able to use an ultra wide version of your Mac screen inside of the Vision Pro. Apparently this isn't coming with OS 2 though, so you know, you're going to have to wait for the next update probably to see that one roll out. Moving right along to Pico news, not too too much is new, it's just that people have gotten to try out the leg trackers that we saw last week in their promotional video for their new headset, and apparently it's pretty good. During a talk recently, Boz from Meta actually said that if people are interested in this form of tracking for your legs, it might be something that they include in future releases of the Quest, which is an interesting take because they've been really, really hard on, you know, more peripherals being attached to you. They they really want it to be just something adaptive that the headset can do without you having to put anything else on, which I totally get. They should also focus on that. Not everybody wants to strap things to them all the time. So totally understand, but, but it is still pretty cool that the Pico leg trackers actually work pretty well. In some really quick kind of not VR related news, I'm very happy to say that Unity is dropping their extremely confrontational runtime license fee, which 
was kind of the reason why I stopped learning Unity. I didn't want to have a whole nother fee being taken out of a game that I potentially might be working on right now. And I know a lot of other developers also kind of jump ship whenever they announce that fee as well. So it's really nice to see that they're getting rid of it, they're listening to people. I think it's mostly because it caused such a huge reaction that they kind of needed to backtrack or else they were going to lose a lot of money from this decision. It's just nice to see that that's gone now. So maybe there will be some Unity tutorials for VR in the future on this channel. We'll see because I did like Unity. It crashed a lot less than Unreal Engine 5. And last but not least, definitely not least, pretty exciting news honestly, HTC is going to be announcing a new VR headset pretty soon too. It's going to be on the 18th of this month, September. And although we only have this really quick teaser, Sadly, it's Bradley believes that this might be an upgrade from the Focus 3 with a brand new Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 2 that HTC has been working with Qualcomm, the company that makes the Snapdragon uh, processors. Together, they've been working on making this, so it should be really powerful. I'm really excited to see what they end up releasing. Plus, the Vive Focus 3 was just very impressive on its own. Expensive, but impressive. And that's gonna do it for today's news. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Virtual Rook once again. Real quick, I just wanna thank my Ko-Fi members, Vegasaur, as well as Starry-Eyed Prince. Truly, it means the world to me that you are helping me keep this channel afloat. And also, if you would like to join them in supporting this channel or just buying me a coffee so I have to wear a maid outfit on one of my streams, you can go to my Ko-Fi right here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye for now, everybody. Have a good one.